know, you've gotten involved a lot recently with advocating for people that sleep outside, which you know that I love. How has that experience been for you, getting to know that community? Uh, it's been incredible. I mean, just the journeys that I've been able to follow, of watching the levels of paperwork and red tape, like you said about slipping through the cracks. I mean, there's just so many. It's like this bridge of Swiss cheese where it's like you just don't know at what point where someone's going to fall through. And I feel like there have been some comparisons to like, oh, we don't want to be like Boston. And it's like, Mm. too late. Like, we are a microcosm of what's happening in Boston. The same addiction issues, mental health issues, uh, the pandemic, I mean, all of those things, they exist here too. And Mm. they exist for the people that have come here. Some of them are Waltham residents that were that that find affordable housing other where, other places, and it's just like you know the talking point of you know getting folks dumped into Waltham from other surrounding cities because of the resources is just not the case. I heard it on the campaign trail. Why is the city spending all this money? You know, and it's like those are all debunked. Like, mm-hmm. and I yeah. debunked them on the doors, and I debunk them regularly because. A lot of them are Waltham residents. Mm -hmm. A lot of them aren't, but they've come here because we are a compassionate city Mm -hmm. and then they build a life here and they want to stay here. And there's, in my mind, there's nothing wrong with that. One of the unhoused people that I was volunteering with, you know, she couldn't get affordable housing in Waltham. Mm -hmm. So she got affordable housing in Woburn. And I drove through and I'd been through several times this neighborhood where she lives. And there are all different types of housing. Mm-hmm. There are condos, there are apartment buildings, there are all affordable housing, there are single family homes. And you know what? They coexist together. And seemingly the world has not gone to hell in these locations. And so I feel like we have so many. And I drove through Newton yesterday and behind the public housing that they have in Newton, they're building more public housing. Mm-hmm. Brookline just finished this amazing project. And I get chills every time I tell the story. And I've said it and I will keep saying it, is that they took some of the folks who were living um, in the hotels along 128 and secured this beautiful new handicapped accessible housing in Brookline, transit-oriented housing. And it was like the level of frustration that things like that cannot happen in Waltham is palpable in my mind and, and how I feel right now because I look at the city and I think, it's not an either or. This this isn't like the city is here in Waltham on the south side and then the residential, you know, pastoral land is in North Waltham. All in the mix as far as I'm concerned. Like we are a city, we are, you know, um, and, and these people, I will point out one other thing, these people that are receiving the services here in Waltham and this happened twice now to two people I volunteered with where they weren't able to stay in Waltham. And that is a layer of detriment to their progress because they've built a support system mm-hmm. in Waltham. Mm-hmm. They have become part of the community in Waltham. And much like our immigrant community and all these other communities, there comes a certain point where we don't say it out loud, but we reject you and yeah. we we, we send you somewhere else because uh, of affordability or accessibility. And that is, we have to think about what we want to be and who we want to be as a city. Absolutely.